give you all of them. You know? And this is how it kind of goes out in format. And then I just call this the winner's mindset. That's on the back side. On the front side, what do you have? This is a handout we gave out, I think, wow, maybe four years ago. So I'm trying to get some of you catch up. Yeah? Enemies of the soul. Now, these are some of the things that are going to... And we'll talk about it. How about that? All right. So I know the feedback is kind of out there tonight because of the rain. So don't keep looking back there like it's somebody's fault. It's the echo of the rain and all that. So, all right. Now, if you look at this one here, the enemies of the soul, this is something that I put together years ago. And it's just as relevant today as it was back then because Hilo is a very soulish place. If you don't know what a soulish mentality is, it's a mind that is ruled by its emotions, basically, and its own will. So when we break apart the word soul, we call that the mind, your will, and your emotions. So you can tell, man, Christians are the most soulish people in the world. Worldly people are just kind of moved by whatever happens, you know, they're just kind of flying around. But soulish people, you find them in the church because they have this so-called religious aspect to them and they're always trying to show you how holy they are and yeah yeah full of holes more like yeah uh, how many of you know that if you are bragging about yourself in christ how many of you know that the enemy will see to it that you are put under some kind of a test he wants to see how full of whatever you are anyway I almost said the word man you see how non-religious i am People are like that, though. You guys can see. And if we talk about the enemies of your soulish realm, and it, here's all you need right here. If you look at the, this list right here, you can see where you kind of fall short, and then you can kind of see where you got to kind of work on, you know, different areas. Now, the first one is the five senses. Now, we talk about the five, five senses a lot. I'm trying my best not to talk pigeon, because if I talk in pigeon tonight, when I get to New York, they're not going to understand nothing I say. So I'm trying to practice my best Caucasian. So bear with me. Five senses. <laughs> what is that? Five senses. Five senses is all I had in my pocket for buy five candies when I was a kid. Well, when we talk about the five senses, how many of you can name the five senses? In no particular order, right? Feel, smell, sight. Here, what else? Taste. So if you look at these five things, these are enemies of your mindset. Because what the enemy would love for you to do is rely on your five senses, and that's how he can trap you. Because you know that a lot of things begin and end when you look and you see something. Like, how many of you know what the smell of weed is? Experts. Look at this place, man. Professionals. Like me, I don't know. You know, this guy, well, yeah, I'm your pastor. Respect. Come on, man. Nah. Anyway, <laughs> one time, you know, I wondered, always wondered why they call it skunk weed. <laughs> Until one time I was in Chicago and I was driving in the suburbs. And I was with this Christian guy. And he, he's like, oh, man, he smelled that. I was like, it smells like weed, man. He's like, no, nah, man, that's a skunk. Got run over. I was like, really? That smells like my neighbor's house. Growing up, Lanakila housing. <laughs> he said, no, it's a very similar smell. But the, the skunk, really, it kind of resembles a real, you know, very distinct odor. And how many you know that when I'm mistaking one thing, it could be something totally different? So I'm, I was tricked, right? It's like when I see somebody, you know, I, like I always give this story. I walk in with my daughter and some, some older Christian lady, <laughs> Christian sees me and my daughter, and all of a sudden spreads a rumor that I'm fooling around. That's kind of, and then finds out that's my daughter. How many know that she was tricked by her sight? Yeah. So some of you, how many of you like to diet? Come on, ladies, how many of you like to diet? First three letters in the word diet. And then this Jesus' cross right at the end. Anyway. <laughs> I just played. How many of you ladies try to diet, and when you see somebody get the chocolate cake, or the, you die? You die a million times over. 
And then you start becoming little orphan Annie. Tomorrow, tomorrow, I'll start that diet tomorrow. <laughs> or you reason it away, you say, there's always tomorrow, especially when somebody reminds you you're on a diet. There's always tomorrow, no worry. We're not worried. Anyway, hallelujah. We just see your third eye through your shirt, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I used to have one third eye. I think I got five eyes. Okay. So your five senses can trick you. How many know that if you're trying to serve God and you're relying on your five senses, here's one of the things, right? People come to this church for healing. Why? I have no idea. Oh, wait, I'm the healing guy. Sorry. That's what I'm kind of known for is healing people. And, you know, the thing is, I'm not really a healer. I'm an observer of what God does while I'm standing there. So, you know, to say that I'm a healer, uh, people like to say stuff like that. But I'm, I'm like you, you know, I'm just a regular person. And I love when I see God do something for somebody. And I'm always thrilled. And I'm very reserved, so I try not to go, yippee, woohoo. Because otherwise you start getting into this cheerleader mentality and you start thinking it was you. Because I've seen, you know, a lot more people not get healed than have gotten healed. So that's got to tell you that I prayed for a lot of people. You know, if, if we're saying that we're approaching forty to 50,000 miracles and hundreds of thousands of healings, then, you know, it's either we're very successful or I'm very old. I'm 600 years old. I feel like some days when I wake up. But you cannot be moved by, you know, how you feel. So some days, you know, here's the thing. On church days, I always get these text messages from people. All the ones not coming. How come you don't tell me you're coming? How come you always text me you're not coming? Text me when you are coming. Thank you, Denise. She, um, yeah. she texted me she was coming tonight. One of the rare breed, I'll tell you what, man. I was, I was stymied, like, she caught me. I haven't gotten one of those in, ever, anyway. So that's the thing, you know, when you start pre-proclaiming that you're not going to come and you start giving me reasons, the, the thing is, what are you trying to tell me? You know, what if God wanted you here? I don't know, I have no idea. I'm just here and I get to observe. So I cannot be moved either way. I just got to preach to whoever shows up. So uh, for you, praise the Lord, you're here. Look what you brave tonight. Yeah, you guys? It's rare. I know. Hilo, no rain. It's... And you also brave the tsunami, uh, tsunami alert. You guys okay or you drunk? Anyway... I'm glad you came, though, because you're going to find out a little bit more about the things that affect your mindset. How many of you have trouble with your mindset sometimes? Trace it back and see if any of your five senses moves you to not do something or to do something. And maybe it's not what God had planned for that day. You know, God's perfect plan involves you every day. You know, some Sundays I wake up and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to do this. And then there's some Sundays I wake up and say, oh my God, I get to do this. And then there's most Sundays where I just say, you know what? Somebody needs me. And that's it. Somebody needs to hear what I have to say. And usually it's a funny story because this church, the greatest thing that happens in this church is the stories based on people's behavior. Some of you, I say, a certain lady, and I tell a story about a lady, but it's really one of you men. And then sometimes I tell a story about a man, but it's actually one of you ladies. Because you laugh, 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 and I laugh too inside because I know it's you. Anyway, <laughs> it's just like that, you know. I, like I went to the doctor yesterday. Here, here's me, right? I, I pray healing. And, you know, I get a lot of people, a lot of results. I go to the doctor. He tells me, you have a torn labrum. I was like, talk English. He goes, bro, your shoulder broken. Oh. Then he, he took a piece of paper and he went like this. Psh, you see like this? Psh. He said, this is people who get injured. Psh. He said, this is you. Psh. <laughs> Did 
Thank you, Dr. Peter Matsuura. And this is you live around the world. I'm exposing you, you low law. Then he tells me, well, you can do one of two things. And he says, you can live with it. Or we can go surgery next week, Wednesday. I'm looking at this guy. I'm like, I thought you had plenty of money. How come, how come next week, Wednesday, what's, you get one opening or something? He said, I only do three every Wednesday. So you're, you're one of the three. I said, let me think about it. So he says, well, since you want to think about it, let's give you a shot to try and see it. So I was like, oh, okay, you can give me one shot. It's going to be good. Well, it's going to be tequila or vodka. <laughs> he said, not that kind of shot. And he busts out this needle. I'm like, long one. And he says, he said, you're afraid of needles. I said, you're afraid of this right in your eye. <laughs> he said, no, 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 for real, you're afraid of needles? I said, well, what difference does it make if I'm afraid of needles? He says, because I'm going to tell you close your eye or no close your eye. <laughs> Big help, yeah? Oh, I'm afraid of needles. Okay, close your eye. Then he sprays this thing. It's like this cold liquid. And I'm like, ah, he's, he's like, oh, it's supposed to numb the pain. Okay, supposed to, okay. And then he doesn't even wait for the thing to get cold. He sticks the needle in my arm. But first he decided to draw on my arm, on big X where he going to poke me. And I said, this is not the kind of Facebook poke, yeah? He said, no, not Facebook poke. This is the real kind. Then he shoves this needle inside and it goes and I can feel it. And then he starts to shoot the medicine in. I'm like, I was like, wow, Jesus, when did you show up? Nice to see you. <laughs> then he was sore. And he said, it's all right. You're a big boy. I said, you're about to be a sleeping boy. <laughs> and he laughed. He pulled him out. He said, okay, that was quick enough. And I was like, now my arm don't work so good. Oh, my God. That was worse than the pain I was in already. And he says, okay, talk to my nurse. She'll schedule you for whatever. He said, you can wait. You can choose any Wednesday because he said, I know you're a praying man. I'm about to be an MMA man and jump on you. And he's laughing, yeah. And then I go out to add insult to injury. He said, uh, my classmate is his nurse. She goes, your co-payment today is $37. $37? I could have got crack for cheaper than that. I could have saved at least $12 to $15 or something. She was all laughing. They go, you're so funny, you. I was serious. What are they talking about? So if the co-payment is $37, what is the actual bill? I said, you paying for this dead forest up here, yeah, on Pona, Hawaii? Because you know he owns all that. Yeah? He's killing all the albizi. He's showing the state how to kill trees. I think we should take a lesson, right? But anyway, that's good. So um, you guys want to pray for me so that my arm not even <laughs> put tape on top? I need tape on my paper shoulder. All right, so, you know, I can be moved, you know, I, I know some people, they'd be like, oh my God, Pastor, I had a shot on Tuesday. I cannot come church Wednesday through Sunday. 2016, April. I told you guys a story about Auntie Tilly. We had, yeah. We had a lady in our church, and this is what she called me one day. She said, I cannot come church. I was like, why? What happened? I got to help my Auntie Tilly. Auntie Tilly, I'll never forget Auntie Tilly's name. Say, Auntie Tilly get one hangnail on her toe. And she get hard time, so I got to help her. I said, oh, so you're going to miss service? Yeah, so I'm going to miss the next three services. Wow, Auntie's toenail in bad shape must be. Then I saw them down on Onikaka Beach, baby party, and making pulehu. 
Maybe it was at you guys' office, huh? No, not you guys. Okay. Nah, these. What? People do that all the time. But hey, whatever. Five senses. Hey, anybody can come up with an excuse anytime you want, right? Excuses and reasons are two different things. I'll let that one sink into you. Hallelujah. How many of you ever called in sick, but you weren't really sick? You could actually call in well, but you... You're calling in well, but using sick. So you're actually lying. Uh, something like that. <laughs> uh, I've done that before. Don't look at me. I, I was an expert at it. You know, at the jail, we used to work four days. You're off two. You work four more. You're off three. You know, something like, no, you four, two, four, one, four, three. It was like that. And the state had a policy. The union came up with this rule that you only needed to call in sick after the fifth day you call in sick. <laughs> so you work four days only, then you get off, so cancel. You work four more, can. Man, we could take an eternal vacation. There was one guy that I worked with at the jail. I started a certain day. In 1985, when I left the jail six years later, I had never met the guy. He was on sick leave the whole time. That's a true story. He, I never met the guy in my whole career. In fact, it was two of them. I never met. I was like, these guys on the seniority list above me, and I've never met these guys. They were retaining the seniority until further notice, I think. I just found that kind of baffling. Like, oh, wow, these guys have mastered. Because you get 21 days sick, 21 days vacation. That's 42 days. So if you position them correctly, wow. Anyway, you guys all like work state now. Anyway, okay. Five senses. The, the next one on your list is the sixth sense. You know, the perceive, the perception. It's not really any of the five physical senses. senses. It's the, then... That perceived sense. The one where he says, I know they're talking about me. You know that one? Or, I sense something wrong with them. You know, this is the greatest killer of ministry. The, you're not worthy and neither am I ministry. Where you look at somebody, maybe they're homeless or something. In your mind, they might be homeless. And you say, oh, I would like, I would like to pray for them, but... Ooh, they dirty. Ooh, they no work. Oh, they able body. They can go work. The perception. So you come up with a reason not to do something based on a reason you come up with, or the well, you know them. They just look evil. The Hilo syndrome. You know the Hilo one. You go watch out for her, and you don't even know her. You've never met her. You just kind of looking at them. Watch out for her. Yeah, whatever. People are like that, crazy. All right. So, you know, one thing in ministry is you you cannot be discriminatory. I was just talking to my neighbor today, and he was telling me about this one pastor that had um, basically he had ho mali mali his way to the top to be a pastor, and now that he is a pastor, nobody following. Nobody attends his Bible study. Nobody attends his church. He went to another island and tried it. See, here's the thing, guys. Don't aspire to be in ministry unless you want to be a bullseye for some other people. Because I can tell you this. Before I was a pastor, I was everybody's friend. I had zero enemies. I had no enemies. As soon as I, be, as soon as I said, Jesus, I love you, all of a sudden, I was the most evil guy I ever met. I look in the mirror, I start looking at myself like, you evil, bro. I just... There's a perception there that's kind of wrong. You know, you start targeting yourself even. And you start wondering why you're in this. You know, there's some other things I would rather do with my life, but they involve a lot of money, and in ministry you don't have that. Anyway, so... You stuck with me, and I stuck with you. No, anyway. No, you got you to gotta have a calling. You got to have a passion. You got to have a desire to do these things. You got to almost be like Jesus. You, you want to get hurt in a way. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So you almost got to forgive them before they do what they... Yeah. 
you know, the halo thing. Yeah. You know, my cousin, sister's brother's auntie was married to them. And you know what they said? Huh? <laughs> Should I run that down by me again? Because I know in Hilo, like, if you're from Hilo, if you're not related to them by blood, you was married to them. <laughs> and they was ma- related to them by cousin, sister, brother, blood. X in off outlaw. It's kind of like that, eh? In Hilo. You know, I was married a time or two. No, one time. Wait. I might still be married. Wait, no. <laughs> I got all my ex's cousins all call me for ministry. I'm like, you better not tell your ex your cousin. You don't get family feud over there. They go, no, 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 secret kind. <laughs> and your car park in the front in the middle of the day, secret kind. Yeah, perfect. You know, I was I was at the hospital today. I went to see one of our one of our just joined the church kind of members, older man. He's unfortunately he said that it's time to mount the horse. He said, it's time for me to go, my body. I said, Uncle, whatever you like, whatever you like, we're there for you. He said, 87 is pretty long, eh? I said, Uncle, get some guys wish they was alive 50 more years to reach 87. And he said, yeah, it's time, it's time. The body is breaking. I said, so you, as long as you're good with that, I'm good with that. He said, eh. Hey. I told him, I, I came to pray for you. He go, ah. No need? I know Jesus? Okay, good. Then he proceeds to give me $100. I'm like, wow. You know more even underwear under there. And you get $100. You good, bro. I'm going to come back tomorrow. Get an ATM under there. (laughs) That's pretty funny, actually. It's like, what? He's like... I wanted to give you this before you went to Texas, but I got, I got sick. I got the flu, so. I'm going to check under these blankets. Might have one. Oh, no, that's diamonds. All right. <laughs> you know, he's not moved. He says, yeah, I'm in pain. I, they're telling me I cannot eat anymore. They're going to put me in hospice tomorrow. He said, but I'm good. I'm good. You know why? Because my wife waiting for me over. He said, you know, three days ago, he said, three nights ago, I was home, and I smelled my wife's perfume. He said, but not, not the old lady perfume, but when we was young, you know, and the perfume was cheap, and that's all we could afford. He said, she came, and she, this is him. He said, you know what? She came, and she looked young, and she said, when you ready, come. He said, no, you come, and she told him, I cannot go over there anymore. You got to come here. So that's why he said, that's why I give up. Enough. I'd rather go be with her. Well, that's a love story, if anything. Yeah. Some of you be like, come. No, you come. No, you come. No, you old. Get out of here. <laughs> and then you're going to live 50 more years. Anyway, <laughs> he said, enough already. Yeah. So just... Keep that family lifted up. Uh, you may know who I'm talking about. If not, no be ni ele. My friend's grandma always ni ele kololo haupia diarrhea. Mind your own business. Okay, auntie, calm down. All right, so you guys all good? We're all good, huh? Yeah, you don't need to worry about heaven. That's secure for you. You just do this dance over here, you know. And this dance is kind of weird because everybody's looking for attention. Yeah, how many of you know people that are, they live for attention? Yeah, what? He's looking up. He's all right. Or what? I see everybody looking up. What happened? I like no, nearly. Anyway, all right. So you guys all all good with that? Fifth, the five senses and the sixth sense. If you're going to do ministry, be moved only by what God tells you. Not by what you see, not by what you hear. 
Because I remember this one time, this guy, he gave me a quick lesson. He was an old man from England, and he told me this. He says, he said, come, come, come. He used to walk with Smith Wigglesworth, if you know who that is. He told me, I want to give you a quick lesson in the ministry. I said, yeah. He said, tell me, how do you feel today? I said, ah, you know, it's like any other day. He's like, oh, good, good. Then he started to tell me. I'm going to give you a word of knowledge. I said, oh, okay. He said, you're having an okay day today. I said, yeah. He said, see how I picked up on that? <laughs> he said, don't be one of those people that hears something and then you try and agree with it and bring it out of them. He said, that doesn't make you spiritual. It makes you observant. So sometimes you got to separate your being observant with ministry. You cannot masquerade the two. You know what I mean? So some people are like that. You know, they they pick up on stuff you say and they don't want to try and act like they're hyper spiritual. But relax. How many of you need friends? Yeah, you don't need stupid idiots. Yeah, picking up on your stuff. Uh, You guys know what I mean? And then he showed me another lady. He He said, you see that lady? She's rubbing her eye. He said, watch this. He said, I'm going to show you observancy in action. She's rubbing her eye. He said, ma'am, can I talk to you? He said, I perceive that something's going on with your eye. And she's like, oh my God. (laughs) Then he looked at me and he winked. So you also have to have that sixth sense where you pick up on people who are trying to act spiritual with you. What we're trying to, you know, cultivate here is a, a... a compassionate ministry, not one that's kind of, you know, commonsensical in a way where we try and tell people, oh, this is what I'm getting from the Lord. That's what psychics do. They ask you questions and then they try and feed you a line of bull to get your money. You know, I'll just be honest with you. I don't want your money. I want all of your money. Wait, that's a psychic, you see? You just do what you're supposed to do with God, and He'll take care of the rest. You know? if, you, if the Bible's requirement is 10% of your gross, then don't be gross with God and give Him 1%. You know what I mean? Just do what God tells you, and you're fine. The church, you know, one thing about the church is the church is the church. You can go from church to church, but you've got to find a place where you fit. Right? Don't come in and perceive that you fit. You've got to come in and fit. See, I know you fit in this church. You know why? Because I got the biggest sofa-type seating you could ever find. No matter what size you are, you fit. Okay. Some churches, they get those little metal ones with the one padding. Man, I've seen so many complaints from ladies, especially when they wear momo and they stand up and the momo disappear halfway. They don't like those chairs, you know. So do you guys enjoy your chairs? Somebody said, oh, we should sell these. They're $300 a piece. I stole these from Kaiser Permanente. I'm not going to. They wasn't there one night. I went up and grabbed them all. <laughs> they came in and said, oh, my God, we have no chairs. Let's buy new ones. Okay. No. What we, what we intend to do is maybe paint these later and change the upholstery, you know. So if you know somebody who can do upholstery for free and supply the material and the labor, that's what we're looking for. Because we're a church. Church is always looking for a good deal. You know what else? Church people are always looking for free lunch. They're always looking for free stuff. I remember one time I was selling, uh, I was doing a fundraiser with the youth ministry. And I was selling chili tickets for $5, Cafe 100, okay, $5. And I was like, selling these tickets to worldly people who don't even go to church. Oh, yeah, give me 10, give me 5, give me 7, you know, and they were just buying. And then I came to the church people, they were like, how much are they? $5? Like, you damn cheapskates, get out of here. You know, church people are always looking for freebies, man. Look to pay. Look to pay. Amen. Take care. You go Walmart, no more free things. Unless you're running out the door fast. (laughs) 
Now they take your picture on the way in. You notice that when you walk in. Now, if you run fast, they still know who you are. Hallelujah. You don't can get away with nothing now. Yeah. Everybody get on camera out. Some of you filming me right now. You better watch it. All right, the third thing on your list is doubt. Now, you guys know that Jesus said doubt and unbelief, right? Yeah. Ah, man, doubt. I mean, you know, I, <laughs> I go to these places and I pray for people, and this is what happened, okay? Uh, I prayed for this person in Texas. They were crippled. Now they're walking normal, okay? And then they went, and then they started telling everybody in their region, and, man, they got healed. You know, they actually had a leg that was six inches sh uh, shorter than the other leg. I prayed, and they evened out. So this person now has thrown away his elevated shoe and using normal shoes and told this person who knew him their whole life, like, hey, what happened? You're like normal. He said, yeah, this guy from Hawaii came, prayed, and, and he's like, oh, I don't believe that. Same like Pastor Denise was talking about. No, I don't believe in that. He said, what don't you believe? I'm not wearing a six-inch higher shoe than the other one now. And the person's like, oh, that's just in your mind. I don't know about you, but if uh, six inches... People are just stupid. Yeah? What do you think? Yeah. Okay, so the moral of that story is don't be stupid. How many of you agree? Do I have to write you a contract not to be stupid? Or can you all just verbally agree to this deal? That if we're in this church, we do more listening than talking, thereby we don't prove that we're stupider than the other stupid people? Or something like that? Because this is what I noticed. The Bible says the ones that are quieter are perceived to be wiser. So what does that tell you? I said be quiet and you guys all yelling. <laughs> you notice that I, I, I went quiet and they were blah, blah, blah. Well, I know what can fit in that hole, a six inch shoe. Anyway, <laughs> well, if you are perceived to be wiser if you do more listening, then it would behoove you to All right. <laughs> people are people, I tell you. Mm. The next one on your list is fear. You know, some people, they, they tell me, oh, pastor, I, I would love to go with you pray for houses when you go pray for houses. I was like, yeah, we go. So I took this person with me one time. Oh, my Jesus, help me. Took this guy with me. He was like, I said, you, you okay? Because when we get to this house, no turning back because they know, you know. And then I made a joke because I'm always joking. I said, if they pick up that you're scared, they're going to chase you down the road. I shouldn't have said that. He's Lolo Porgy, I tell you. He was a Porgy guy. And he was like, huh? You know, when they tell you, huh? You hear the fear loud and clear. I said, nah, nah, only playing. He's like, no, no fool around, right? No, for real kind. No. Pastor, you're not screwing around with me, eh, bro. I was like, I was like, no, 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 no worry. I get him. I, I'll take care of it. So we're walking up to this house, okay? And I tell the people, come out of the house. This house is pretty notorious in Hilo. It's a pretty bad one, okay? I'm not going to tell you where because all you going to drive by tonight. I know you. I know how you guys operate. <laughs> I went to this house. It's an older house, okay? It's on Reed's Island. You guys know where Reed's Island is? Yeah, it's, get, get, get some pretty nuts places up there, yeah? So, in fact, get one lady missing up that side today. Anyway, but... We go over there and we get to the house and I tell him, okay, so you ready? He's like, Pastor, I get heebie-jeebies. I was like, what you talking about? We never set one foot on the property already. He goes, I'll go wait in the car. Is that okay? I was like, you don't want, want it to be? No, you're not going in the car and I lock the car. Lock. He's like, why are you doing this to me? Why? Why? He started crying. I'm like, what are you crying? I said, you know what? Stay by the car. And he's like, no. And he grabs my shirt. I'm going with you. 
So he's holding my shirt like a four-year-old. Come, junior boy, follow me. And we get to the porch of this house, and the people are standing out there, and they said, yes, yeah, some days it's worse, some days it's bad. And I said, so what's going on? They go, you just hear things running through the house, and you hear doors and stuff. I said, okay. So I said, well, right now we apply the blood of Jesus from the top of this house to the bottom, corner to corner, side to side, front to back, all four boundary pins. We circle it in, and we apply the blood, and we push in. So we push everything out. As soon as I said this, he, he grabs my pants. He's like, Pastor, I saw something in the window. I'm praying. <laughs> he's grabbing my ojole now and he's squeezing. He's pinching me. Bro, let go. Stop. He's like, <sighs> Pastor, I don't can. <sighs> Soon as we do this, I said, stop, I'm praying. Soon as we do that, we hear knocking all over the house. The whole house starts knocking. He's like, I don't can. I like run down the road. You was right. They're going to chase me down the road. I said, no, you coming now. Now I grab his shirt. Let's go. We get to the front door. The door opens by itself. Here. The door is closed, mind you. And he's like, I don't care, please, no, make me do this. I said, you big baby, oh my God. I drag him through the house and we go and we feel things. And in one room, we're standing in a room now. You can hang meat in this room, it's cold. And we're breathing and he's breathing. And all I see, it looks like on choo-choo train. <laughs> I was like, come on, man, just pray. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. We're going to get this thing out. And we pray, and this thing runs through him. And he's like, ah, ah. and he shishi his pants. Poor thing. 40 something year old Portuguese man. This thing leaves, so we get, I'm checking, okay, it's good. Everything's good. It's all good. I tell the family, come in. They walk to the house. They say, check it out. Do you guys feel okay? They go, wow, it's such a huge difference. It's nice and warm. They say you could literally, literally feel the house vibrating all the time. I said, so everything good? And then and be, and before the family can answer, yes, Portuguese. Yeah, because Pastor and me, we get them, you know the kind. Huh? Oh, look, I like to give this guy one wedgie right from the pit of hell right now and pull his underwear right over his head. I'm looking at this guy like, he's like, right, Pastor? We get him, man. Huh? He's like the Chihuahua dog with the German Shepherd, you know the one? And then we leave, and then we come back to church, and he's like, yeah, me and Pastor went to this house, and I think it was haunted. I tell you what, bro, we got rid of them. We? And then someone asked me, oh, so he was a big help to you? I go, yeah, if he was wearing Depends. I said, he forgot to tell you guys that part of the story. <laughs> oh, my. Fear is a funny thing. Yeah. I've seen people before, you know, they go into a house and they're praying for a while and they get flown. They get grabbed and thrown. And they don't know what happened. Like, they're on the ground. What happened? Oh, my God. Then they call me. Um, can you, like, uh, we go to such and such a church and we believe we could do it. But, and I'm not saying I'm more powerful. I'm just more knowledgeable about certain things, how to feel it, how to sense it. Sometimes I see... There's certain things you can do to cleanse your property. If you want to know how to do it, then call the Portuguese. He know everything. <laughs> I just call him Portuguese. It's not a derogatory remark. You know, there's Portuguese people. But then there's Portuguese. Big difference. You know what I mean? This guy. He's since moved on. He's in Kona now. And last I heard, he's uh, teaching people how to pray for houses. Mm-hmm. 
Better double up on those underwear, brother. <laughs> but I'm glad that he got something off this ministry and he learned something because he's teaching it word for word. But how I many you know that things change over time? You cannot be stuck in the 90s or the 2000s. You got to migrate. You got to move on. We started this journey as a church in 1998. So how I many you know that I'm not the same pastor I was in 1998? This is a more polished version, believe it or not. <laughs> That's scary for some of you. Well, you know, I've learned some things about how to deal with people. You know what I learned the most about ministry? Let the people do the talking. You just do the praying. Say amen to that because I'm telling you, if you go in with your so-called proclaimed, self-proclaimed wisdom, people are going to see right through you. They're going to call you a bragger, full of pride, arrogance. And then what are you going to do? Nobody going to call you anymore. You're going to be on freelance Hallelujah. No more such thing as a freelance pastor. I told you guys, unless there's such thing as a freelance gynecologist. Is there such thing as a freelance proctologist? Come on, bro, check me out. No such thing. Amen. I never go to a freelance orthopedic surgeon and tell him, poke me in the arm. That would otherwise be known as a drug dealer. <laughs> Some of you have experienced freelance medicine on the streets of Hilo. Anyway, mm -hmm. some of you self-medicate too yet. All right. <laughs> you know what one of my favorite comedy movies of all time is? Be Dazzled. You guys remember Be Dazzled with Brendan Fraser? Oh, my God. If you haven't watched that movie, go get it. It's in the fight all I've been at Walmart probably. You will see every... <laughs> this guy has an experience with the devil. And you watch it. And the devil is Elizabeth Hurley. She's a beautiful model, right? Beautiful. And the thing is, he has these experiences. You got to watch the movie. That shows me people in the body of Christ all the time. Every time I watch them, I'm like, oh my God, I know somebody just like that in this church. Not our church. A church. Because in this church, we fix your head. You know, my friend's Portuguese grandma used to always tell her, shut up your head. That would stun you because you don't know what part of your head you got to shut up. What she was telling us, stop, stop talking stupid, shut up your head. One time she put clothespins on my friend's lips. And he was like... <laughs> It was right on Pona Hawaii Street. You know, as you're going up where Marcy used to work in the doctor's office above the fire station, get those houses on the left. My friends, my friends put clothespin on his lips because he was talking back. If you take them off, I'm going to put two more on your ears. And she looked at me and she said, what about you? You don't even want to answer because... <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Mm. And I had to watch my friend walk around like on duck. And afterward, his lips swelled up. And he was talking like fat over. I was like, oh, she said, shut up your head, bro. I don't know what that means, but I'm pretty sure it means be quiet. I think. Oh, anyway, you know why we were playing Hot Wheel Racing under the house? And sh Portuguese, they wax the cement. You know that when they paint the cement and then they wax them so it's shiny? We was playing Hot Wheels Racing and left tracks on the floor. And she said, what are you doing? And my friend was like, why? We're just playing cars. Shut up your head. Come here. And she put the clothespin. Yeah, I went home right after that because I don't want to be the Portuguese Donald Duck. <laughs> yeah, it's like that. How many of you had older people tell you like that? These days, no, they, they back up the kids now. Before time, I would get licking. They go, go home, the phone call reach before I reach, get licking again. And then when my father come home, I get one third one. Nowadays, these kids walking around with soft okolis. Yeah, you know, 
Oh, so I asked we had to tense them up. Because you don't know who's going to give you licking next. Because it could be anybody. It could be the auntie, the uncle, anybody. I remember one time, Lanakila House, we all shooting pool, and this kid went act up, and the Mrs. Kelly Peel, she's from Kyoka, she went call. She called the parents. The mother came down with her curlers and her nightgown and her slipper with one stick and started whipping the kid inside. I was like, yeah, no more such thing as child abuse in Lanakila. It's, uh, and she pointed the stick at everybody. Like, Who's next? <laughs> Madam, I don't know what you speak of. We're all well behaved, young children. Yeah, that was the old days. You know, if, you, if your mother came with a nightgown and the curlers, you was in deep cock a doodle doo. And this is the next one, then untrained mind, because sometimes if you don't have a trained mind, your mouth gets away from you. Yeah, you start talking too fast. You know, like, Mom! You hear this in Walmart a lot. Mom, I want this new toy. You know, you never buy me anything. Local kids, you get the oogie eye. The I means, wait till we get in the car. <laughs> and wait till you get home, because you going to get it. I saw a kid just not long ago, you know, I was in Lubbock, Texas, buying some stuff, and this kid was throwing a tantrum in the Walmart. He went, you never buy me anything. And he sat on the floor in the middle of the aisle. I'm not moving till you buy it for me. I was like, oh, this would be the field goal attempt from the 50 yard line. <laughs> you know, you can tell when you're getting older because I wanted to help this mother so bad. I was looking at the boy. Better get off that floor. <laughs> I was not going to leave this store. They don't know where I came from. I ain't from Texas. I'll beat your white, you know what? <laughs> You so want to help them, you know what I mean? And I'm not an abuser except when I see a kid doing that. And I'm still not an abuser. I'm a disciplinarian. I'm just going to pull your hair and pull your two ears and kick you in Okole and you're going to be in a wagon. Mother, where are we going now? <laughs> Some of the people are going to listen to this message and go, Oh my God, what is this man? He's a monster. No, I'm not a monster. I'm a rock star. I'm talking about energy drinks. Okay. Untrained minds are everywhere in the body of Christ. You know why? Because everybody is free. You ever been in a church where the board rules the church? Hmm? You know, well, the board hires the pastor. The board, if they get finicky, fires the pastor. You are in a safe place because there are five positions on our board of directors in this church and I hold four of them. Some say that's not a democracy. I believe it is. <laughs> I call it a theocracy. Better yet, I call it a meocracy. <laughs> the way we structure the board is I have two votes and it's you know, because yeah, I deserve two votes. I'm a member as well as the president. Hello. So I represent you guys. Would you want to fire me? It ain't happening. I started this thing and I'm going to die with the papers in my hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, and we went, we had a lawsuit against us and it dragged us into court and they said, Why is your board set up like this? <laughs> I ain't going to be forced out of my own ministry. That's craziness. Oh. So it stood up in court, and the attorney was very upset. Very upset. So what? You like your own? Go start your own. Huh? We just had one of our associate pastors resign. He wants to go start his own. Here's my advice to him. Go for it. Have fun. Let's see what happens. Amen. That's all. Because I'm not going to say it's not going to work. Who am I to say it's going to work? Not going to work. It's up to God, right? 
If you feel like you got the goods, then go do it. Amen. All right, but don't call it freelancing. Because last time I checked, if you get one member named Lance, he costs you money. <laughs> I just play. <playing>, no. <laughs> I had a bunch of Lance. No. And I, that's a figure of speech for people, you know. People always come with an idea that costs the church money. You know, here's the thing. We're here. We're a community-based organization. We serve our community. I believe we do a very good job because I will pray for anybody you bring. Amen. You guys know this? I could set a fee schedule. Cancer, $9,000. Hangnail, $14. But I won't know. Hallelujah. One pastor was, was telling me he basically went out of business. He couldn't even have church anymore because he said that he would do house calls and go to people's houses and they would pay him in lao lao taro. They would give him kalopi, give him pipicala, and he would tell, I don't can pay my light bill with lao lao. Thank God we don't have to do that. You guys are very generous. High five your neighbor and say, you are so generous. And if you, high five, if you high five somebody and you're not a giver, you're a liar. Okay, so I'm just playing. Whatever God tells you to give, man, you got to start someplace. Start at 1%, work yourself up to 10 and go beyond that and watch what God does for you. You know, even Jonah can attest to tithing. You know, God will reward you as long as you're not blowing them all on cigarettes. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, wait, I never mean that. Anyway. Like I said, you like quit smoking, stop buying, and stop borrowing. Does that make sense? All right. So, no, ask me for borrow either. I'll say, get $3. Right? All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One time we were coming out of McDonald's, I saw a homeless lady standing there. I, gave, I had $4, I gave her $4. And this is what she told me. This was several years back. She goes, $4. You know what? Pack cigarette costs five. That's an untrained mind right there. <laughs> you know, I can buy five. My doubles it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> People are weird, man. This stuff. You know, practicing it costs $5. I don't know. I don't smoke. So shut up, you. Go beg for a dollar more from somebody else. Praise the Lord. One, one time I gave a pair of shoes to this homeless guy. You know what he told me? They're too big for my feet. Why would you give me such big shoes? Because I get big feet. But I know someplace else on your body where this size 14 fit. Bend over. fits perfectly that's an untrained mind even me i responded with an untrained mind you see how tit for tat doesn't work yeah you're gonna argue with a homeless guy who's the winner <laughs> it's like arguing with a crazy person who's gonna win if you're arguing in your house with a crazy person who's gonna win well you determine who's the crazy one because uh, last time i checked both of you are because if I ask you to one, you can both tell me the other one is crazy. That's why I stay out of marital counseling. You know why? I'm the last guy you want to. I'm divorced. Don't ask a priest who's never been married. And don't ask me who's been divorced about marital counseling. What, what am I going to tell you? Yeah, divorce them. That's my answer. <laughs> I don't know how else to answer. Like, I'm going to give you good advice here. She's always right. And when she's wrong, she's right. But remember, medication helps her to be right. <laughs> That's an untrained mind right there. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Hey, man. Yeah, you guys all know the untrained people in your life, right? It's like you're holding a chair and the whip. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I don't need to go home with you guys, so formulate your own response at your own safety. <laughs> <laughs>
Somebody go call me from the front porch tonight. Thanks, sir, Pastor. Guess why I stay? <laughs> On the porch with one blanket, no pillow. Thanks. <laughs> Not even the couch. You know you local ladies ain't going to let them even be in the house. There's a chance you're going to come, honey. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Some of you have lived these sermon materials. <laughs> it's a scary, bro. Or your parents or your friend, my friends' parents, untrained minds. You know, here's an untrained mind for you: when a person gets up in front of the congregation, they're like, Jesus, don't forsake us. Please visit us with your presence. Shut up your head and sit down. <laughs> Where are you seated? In? Oh, you guys are just good. What scripture is that? Oh, you guys are like the best. You know why? Go baffle your friends with that one. Position versus? Yeah, how many of you know some conditional Christians? You can know a conditional Christian when they say, I love you. But, oh, come on, you like go one round right now. <laughs> I'll say this and I'll say it correctly because some of you like to use it against me. Anytime somebody uses a sentence with the word but in it, they usually don't mean the second half. And they don't mean the first half either. Oh, the first half, yeah, the first half. Because when they throw in the but, that's a separator. One is position, one is condition. Sometimes they're both conditional. Like, I love you, but... Now they're going to lay out for you what their version of you is. So yeah, they don't usually mean the first half when they say, but... You are so beautiful. <laughs> you are so smart. You have so much potential. <laughs> you know what's funny? All my teachers said that when I was growing up. I was on a flight to Las Vegas, and one of my teachers was like, Timothy Waugh. I'm like, oh, my God, here we go. When they say my whole name, then I, my hair stand up like, eh, what I did now. The only thing missing is my middle name. That's my motto. But one of my teachers said that, Timothy Waugh. I'm like, oh, oh, hi. And they go, I heard you pray for people. We're on a flight to Vegas. Yes. <laughs> so this is what this teacher told me she said pray for me I get the kind she started going down this list and everybody's listening and you know I get irritable bowel syndrome so I always go in bathroom okay <laughs> everybody just heard you now we know where you're going so I said okay I said, you know what? Meet me in the back. So I went in the back. I prayed for this teacher of mine, Mrs. Never you mind. Prayed for her and she's like, oh, you know what? I feel better already. I said, you know why? We're close to heaven. <laughs> Flying over the Pacific. And she's like, <laughs> I was joking. She said, no, 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 no. I feel really good. And I turned around and all her friends, okay, my turn. Do you guys know where we are? <laughs> so I pray for these people, and then I go back to sit down, and then I get tapped on the head. Don't forget about me. So I go back, and I pray. And then the flight attendants want to pray. And then before you know it, in these days, you know, those days when I was praying, I prayed for these flight attendants on Hawaii. They used to have the cabin in the middle of the jet. I prayed for one slain in the Holy Ghost. I'm like, please get up, please get up, please get up, <laughs> please get up. <laughs> There's only me and her, and she's on the floor, and all her friends coming back with the carts. I'm like, please get up, now, now. 
the friends go, "Oh my God, what happened?" I said, and then she's like, oh, "Oh no, he just prayed for me." Oh wow! And they're like, "My turn." I started praying for all these people. They all go to New Hope on Oahu, different versions of New Hope. I guess they get different flavors. One strawberry, one lemon lime, one <laughs> lihimoe. I don't know nothing about the New Hope Oahu, but they are, well, I go to Lee, I go to Leeward, blah, blah, blah. I go to this one, blah, blah, blah. I go to the one in Aloha Tower, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God, so many different flavors. And they're like, oh, me too. And then I had this big, big guy. He was the lead flight attendant. He was, so, cause. He was bigger than me. I was like, wow, man. And I was big that time. I was like, wow. You're a big hombre. <laughs> so, I understand. And when they start doing this, when they talk to you with their eyes closed and with plenty of steam, so I understand that you pray for people. I'd like you to pray for me now. Go ahead. <laughs> and he did this. I was praying for him and he was ready to go. And he said, Oh, hang on. I got to make the announcement. We've just made our initial descent into McCarran Airport in Las Vegas, Hawaii's Ninth Island. And then he comes back. Okay, I'm ready again. <laughs> I prayed for him and he went down like a ton of bricks. Boom! <laughs> and I was like, please get up. Why are you guys falling? What? I pray for people and they fall, but not all of you. Why? Everybody got to fall. Yeah. Then the co-pilot came out to use the bathroom. He's like, oh my, he saw feet sticking out. Oh, what's going on here? I go to New Hope, blah, 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 blah. I'll take some prayer. For real? <laughs> I pray for the co-pilot. But dang, not again. Everybody was down on that flight. Oh, my God. And then the pilot came out after, and the co-pilot staggered. His shirt was all the kind. <laughs> he said, hey, there's a guy out there praying for people, man. This is a true story. I'm not making this up. I pray for the pilot, too. And he went, dang I was like, I hope the guy that's flying right now can see straight. Everybody, everybody, I'm not even lying. Every single flight attendant went down and the pilots too, all at different times. Because if they all went in one mountain, I would have to fly the plane. And I can tell you right now, I'll be like, because I don't know how to fly one plane. I'm sorry. Thank God for autopilot. Yeah. <laughs> And then they all like walking off. You know what they gave me? They're like, oh my God, that was so wonderful. I feel so good. Blah, blah, blah. They gave me one case Hawaiian Springs water from the plane. I don't even like, you know, the big bottles? Give me a whole case. They said, hey, thank you so much. I was like, you guys don't like give me the nuts or something. It's, you know. And they said, oh, you don't like the water? I said, you know, I come from Hilo where they grow this water. Yeah. Just take them, it's free. The lead flat at that. Just take them, it's free. I walk into the terminal on case water. It's not light, man. It's like, oh my God. Well, praise the Lord. And they go, oh, we would offer you and ride, but they get the bus at the bottom of the plane for us. So have a nice day. Oh, you malark. Anyway, so I got one case, Hawaiian Springs water. So when I got to my brother's house, I never see in a while, I said, look what I brought you from Hilo. <laughs> I'm a blesser, not a liar. I'm a giver. Brother said I can give unto whoever I like. <laughs> Untrained mind, Hawaiian Air employees giving away the stuff off the plane. <laughs> so now, whenever I pray for somebody on the plane, I bring home one Hawaiian Air blanket. 
I got one mountain of them about this side. You guys need one. That's how many people are prayerful. That's how I keep track. Because I got I to gotta calculate the numbers. Like my former associate pastor. This is the 1,348 person I pray for. So many blankets I get. Some of you can laugh at that. You've been here long enough. You know what I'm talking about. All right, so some of these other ones are mind open to gossip. I mean, you know that if you're a gossiper, it's bad. But if you receive gossip, you're just as bad. All right? Which is worse? Yeah? The cesspool or the guy dumping into the cesspool? <laughs> anyway, it's the same thing, right? How about an evil mind? How many you know some evil minds? They're looking at people, oh, you know her very much. Uh, I, I used to observe this in the first church I got saved in for the last time. Women's prayer group. We're the intercessors. They always talk like, nah, 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 rah, rah. and they act like they're somebody. You know them, you gotta watch out for them, you know. And they all talk like they used to smoke cigarettes. So after that, you gotta watch out, you know, because they're just no good, you know, these guys. You, gotta... you guys all get throat problems, or is that just how intercessors? Hallelujah, praise Jesus. Okay. And then I heard one lady say, Oh, you know her, you gotta watch out because I heard that she was sleeping with so and so. So let's pray. What? You can spill all the gossip and then you hide it under let's pray. And like you smoking cigarette in the parking lot. I mean, hey, no hide your gossip. Don't gossip at all. How's that? That's just evil. Amen. All right, how about these people? Worriers, worry. Worry is a real enemy of your soul. Why? Because you're always worried about somebody else's business usually. When you guys heard about the tsunami tonight, how many of you were a little alarmed? A little bit. Uh, okay, that's normal. Why? Because most of you live way up high. You know, you got to worry that the wave going all the way up Mauna Kea. <laughs> I know Denise was worried. She lived in Waimea. Man, the water come way high, you know. That's why she came Hilo. First hand look. <laughs> no, I just... Well, hey, you have a right to be alarmed, but if you worry too much, I mean, no worry can kill you. Like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. You have a right to be alarmed or alerted, you know, heightened sense of awareness. Amen. Don't be like the pictures from 1960 where they're all sitting on Suisun Bridge. These guys not worried at all, looking for fish. <laughs> I was at the hospital, you know, the old man I was praying, I was visiting, I didn't pray for him, he told me not to, but he, he said, I told him, oh, yeah, I got on tsunami alert, and he's like, oh, wow, you can go run out there and grab me one moi. <laughs> really? For real? <laughs> you don't can eat, and you're like, oh, moi. Let me risk my life, forget you and fish, you cannot eat. I think it's the drugs. Anyway. Then he's like, nah, 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 nah. Okay, that makes it better. Anyway. <laughs> well, our church, you know, we're right by the water. You are protected. Let me tell you why. Seaside Hotel, going to block all the water going around us. <laughs> and you're okay, right? We can just watch everything. Watch the gas pumps explode. Boom, 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 boom. Hallelujah. No, I think we'd be out of here by then. So tonight we served dinner a little early in case they closed the road. You know what I mean? That was the only reason we served early. Because we know you guys, no matter if you get hurricane, tornado, tsunami, earthquake, you need your food. We know how you guys operate. Right? They'll close the road like, but what about the dinner? There's a nuclear bomb coming. I don't care. I like my show you chicken now. You know what happens on this kind of thing? Everybody in the mainland finds out there's a tsunami alert. And they all start texting me. Your church. We're praying for you guys. Thank you. And look where we stay. Why are they praying? Right by the water. <laughs> if they knew we were here, they'd be all like, what is wrong with you people? 
was even in Texas, they asked me, are you on that, that island where the volcano's at? Yeah. Aren't you afraid? <laughs> nah, we just with tinfoil, we wore it off the volcano. <laughs> I was joking with somebody, really? How much tinfoil do you have to wear? And one of them will say, I saw that on TV. The scientists, they wear the tinfoil. Why? That's some big lao lao. No worry. We don't care. What's a lao lao? Oh, that's how we steam the pig. Then they caught me. They're like, you liar. You lie. People worry for you, right? You know, this man, he's, he's going to leave earth, you know, and he's like, ah, no worry about me. And everybody's like, oh my God, how do you feel with my hand? That's the only thing you can do. Amen? How about this one? An undisciplined mind. These are people that cannot get on track. They just can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. How many of you know people like that? Oh, uh, how many of you are like that? Undisciplined in your mind. Tomorrow, I'm going to start my New Year's resolution. September <laughs> September 17th, I'm going to start my New Year's resolution because all the other days never work tomorrow. <laughs> some of you are going to start something tomorrow, right? I'm going to start. I'm going to not eat donuts tomorrow. That's what you said January 1st, September 17th tomorrow. You took, you're taking a while to run this one through your mind, yeah? Undisciplined mind. How many of you always tell yourself, even by the shoes, I'm going to start exercising. And your right arm look like Popeye. <laughs> People tell me, Pastor, pray with me. Okay, what am I praying for? I'm going to stop eating sugar. Then I see him at Starbucks. Yeah, give me a double pump vanilla. Yeah, and then throw some caramel in there and some chocolate at the same time with non-fat milk. <laughs> For real. Really? Mm. Yeah. Well, people say, I'm going to stop eating carbs. Can I get that fried chicken plate with salad? Okay, you know that the breading on the fried chicken is a carbohydrate. No, it's not. Okay, I won't argue with you. I'm sorry. They like bite my arm off. And I'll take the biscuits and a, and a mashed potato. And mac salad. Gravy all over. None of you, though. You're all good, right? Look at your neighbor. We got the most truthful people in the world right in here. Yeah? All, right. all right. How about a negative mind? You guys know some negative people? How about the, the one guy that every time you say something, they're going to tell you all the reasons why you cannot or wouldn't or shouldn't do that? Yeah, you guys know those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had listened to everybody that told me not to start a church, all of us tonight would be in the bar meeting up. <laughs> you know how many people told me, don't do it, don't do it. You shouldn't, you better not. I even had my pastor say, yeah, I don't think you should. I don't think the timing's right. And I'm like, hallelujah. Well, some days I wonder the same thing. But anyway, here we are. It's all good. Negative, right? How I many you know some negative Nellies? How about some negative Nelsons? Yeah, okay, you guys know that. You don't be one. Amen. I know one guy named Nelson. He's pretty negative. I know one lady named Nellie. She's pretty negative too. You know? If you say, oh, what a beautiful day. Oh, it's so freaking hot. And then it starts raining. Oh, there's the rain. It cools you off. Now it's so bloody raining. You want to be a mole and climb on the ground and go live by yourself? You give me an ostrich, stick your head under the ground. Huh? How's that? No matter what, they, you, you, damn if you do, damn if you don't. You, right? Our church right now, how many of you are here and uh, enjoying this nice cool breeze going through? Yeah. And on Sunday, what? <laughs> nice hot breeze. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, we are local churches. In our history, we own two pieces of property that had air conditioning. You know what people used to complain about? Say it. Too cold. Now we're in this building. Guess what they say? Too hot. I don't know where to put you guys. I don't know. You guys like go down on a car? We can go. Might have a breeze, might not. Yeah, you might be regular. Normal. Too normal. We're not spiritual enough. It's too normal. Well, one thing about your church, hallelujah, God loves you. Do you love God? Then shut up. Stop being negative. How many of you like the notes you get? There's one misspelled word in here. Can you find it? I'm lying no more. See how fast all you guys look. I like, well, I'm going to find them. This is not word search, you monkeys. As soon as I say that, every one of you in well, I'm going to find them. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Get plenty of words back here. You guys are wrong. You see, I can point out negativity anytime I want. <laughs> you guys all wanted to prove me that I was wrong. Yeah, it don't work. I'm perfect. Shut up, your head. <laughs> Here's another enemy of your soul, your family and friends, especially if they don't go to church. Hallelujah. You know our church? Yeah, we get a lot of results, but some people find us a, Oh, you know what I heard about that church? <laughs> They'll turn into chihuahuas on a rampage. <laughs> you know what angry chihuahuas are? A nuisance. A nuisance, that's all, because all you got to do is go, <laughs> From far. <laughs> and that's what we have, a lot of people far away. <laughs> Donkey, get out of here. Some of your family and friends treat me like that. They don't even know me, never met me, but they know everything about me. Because I heard. What you heard? I'm the funniest guy, man. Come on. <laughs> that is funny. You just got to find the comedy in these people because they have nothing better to do than advertise my ministry. Nothing better. Look, they give me good advertisements. Even though, you know, in Hollywood, I, I, I meet a lot of these so-called celebrities. You know, a lot of them are famous for doing stupid stuff. Yeah. You know what they told me? There's no such thing as bad publicity. It's just publicity. That's why some of them on purpose they do the dumbest things ever so that they at least become relevant again in the press. <laughs> I'll give you a perfect example. Gary Busey. You guys know Gary Busey? He's famous now for getting into a, His career was on the decline. Got in a motorcycle accident. Hit his head. Now he's like... <laughs> so everything he does is funny to people. So he's relevant in Hollywood. He's on commercials and everybody laughs at him. <laughs> and this guy won the Academy Award at one time, I believe, for the Body Holly story. You know how I know? Because I went to the Body Holly Museum in Lubbock, Texas. We had nothing better to do but go see a dead guy's museum. <laughs> and look at his clothes he used to wear. Wow. Well, you know, I was thinking to myself at that moment, if I wanted to see dead man's clothes, I'd just go Salvation Army. You like see Auntie's Moo Moo from 1969. Stay in Salvation Army, hanging up. This is the only way you know not to buy one Moo Moo. If the thing, the pattern is worn off in the back, she was sitting on a planet moving around. No buy that one. Yeah. <laughs> no lie. Everybody goes to Goodwill or Salvation Army, look around. I wonder who was in here. When I used to work, in, I used to volunteer in the office at New Hope up Kupalong. And people used to bring in bags of clothes. 
And we used to have this one holy guy that was on the staff. He always walked around barefooted. And he always used to go, hey man, what size are those? Like, oh, it looks like a men's large. Perfect! He searches through them all. Oh. You know when you're looking at one Aloha shirt that is kind of shiny? It's like from the 70s, you know, one of those like polyester kind of deal. And then he would do this every single one. He would sniff the armpit. <laughs> okay, it's good. He said, man, DMC is the way to go. DMC? Dead man's clothes. Arr. Then he grabbed a pair of pants one time. I was like, oh, I don't know. And he said, yeah, man, you got to check the zipper on this. Because if he went to the bathroom a lot, they wear out the zipper. Uh, no. And then he grabbed some boxers. Ah, no. You don't use no use underwear. You cannot even jump out of the plane with some of these ladies' underwear. The thing all worn out, the parachute already. Okay. You're not going to survive the fall. Because <laughs> they would bring them in. Why would you bring in somebody's old underwear? Oh, some of those on the ways you can cover the car with. For real, get the two holes with a mirror come out. I'll let the visual set in for some of you slow pokes out there. You guys good now? Okay, here we go. News. Is another enemy of his soul, man. Right? I mean, the news, right? They always play that music. Dun, 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 Tsunami alert. What? Mm-hmm. Well, you know that they're just trying to get your attention to worry and lock in on this station. You guys remember when O.J. Simpson was in the white Bronco and was driving down the L.A. freeway? Yeah, you guys remember that? Dun, 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 dun. O.J. on the run. Oh my God, I got to watch this Bronco go down the freeway. How sad, really? Some people got to go home at a certain time to watch Guy Hoggy on the weather to tell you that it's always mostly cloudy, chance of showers. That's Hilo. Oahu and Maui, partly cloudy, chance of showers. Which one do you like better? Chance of showers. Get chance. If you stay in here long enough, get chance you're going to feel the showers in the building. <laughs> Some people, they just get motivated by that. You know, you can watch the news. The first 10 minutes is always about the worst things going on in Hawaii. Right? Oh, and this guy, he was like in the shopping cart riding down the H1. Oh, I got to watch that. Hallelujah. So news, news is motivated to get you to be a certain way, soulishly, right? How about social media? She never liked my posts. Unfriend, unfriend, block, 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 block. Restrict, kick to the curb. They should have a kick to the curb button. A different degree of blocking. Unfriend, block, kick to the curb. I wish you would burn in hell button. <laughs> That's the religious one. Yeah? So even for me, I got to watch what I post. You know, several months ago, I was coaching for YK High School JV Boys Program. I took a nice picture of a sign in the bathroom at a certain high school I'm not allowed to say. In the girls' bathroom. And it said, don't stand on the teolet. Don't throw, and it kept going, don't throw paper in the teolet. Two times it spelled teolet, teolet. I took a picture and I posted it online. I almost got fired from Waikia High School for posting negative things on social media. Because it was at another school. 
And they were saying, because I was personally attacking the English department at this high school. <laughs> That's what I say. That's what I say. That F word was readily available right there. Who spells Teolet? How many of you know how to spell what I'm talking about? Even if you spell it T-O-Y-L-E-T, you'd be half right. At least on the pronunciation. T-O-L-E-T. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I still have the picture of some of you. And we're going to post that right now. Hang on. Because I'm not working for YKR right now. <laughs> no. You can't do it, Nadia, because now I'm coaching at St. Joe. You can't do it because people get offended. If you don't can spell, you deserve to be offended. You never pay attention in class. This is not a dyslexic word where you go, teleot or something. Yeah? This is teolet. It's going. So I, I got called down into the athletic director's office. For my illustrious humor, colorful. Hey, you know what they said? Hey, you gotta put it down. Oh, that was professional. Okay. That's what he told me. You gotta put it down. You know why? Because you don't can be posting a kind, because then they get offended and they take it personal. And then, furthermore, oh, he used a big English word. Furthermore. Wait, is that closely resembling to the Lana Moa? Furthermore, he tells me that the guy who wrote that sign is a lifeguard at Kau and he graduated from Waikia. So, which one did I offend? The Waikia grad or the employee or the school? He said, just take them down. Oh, gosh. All right. He even burned a copy that was sent to him from Kau, from some people, sent it to the athletic department by fax and email, and then he presented, you see, I see because I'm the one took that picture. I took that picture that you showed me. I know which one, man. I was actually proud of myself that I can spell Teolet. Yeah. No offense to you, I care grads, but Hilo High has better grammar. <laughs> I just played. Nah. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Who didn't catch the error? That's my question. Because they said that sign was up there for eight or nine years. Are we in a time machine where we still handwriting signs? In this day and age, you can type a sign, press print. Beep. No, they still handwriting them. It was nice though, it was very neatly written. Except. <laughs> Yeah, so you know what they were writing, right? Don't throw paper. The word teolet wasn't, you guys all got it wrong. It was sink. <laughs> they meant to write sink. I'm playing. You guys got to keep up, man. <laughs> people? Hmm? Uh, you know what I mean? Somebody should have caught that in nine years. What do you think? Huh? No? Because the tape was all worn out. The tradition, you know, the tradition, Jesus said, tra the traditions of men have nullified the power of God. You know why? People run with what they heard. Yeah? People always run with what they heard. God helps those who help themselves. That ain't in the Bible, guys. Sorry to inform you. God does not help those who help themselves. He, in fact, He insists that you help yourself with what He has already given you. But he's not going to help you. You guys understand this? 99% of the prayers you pray are unnecessary. Because it was left to you to dominate. Authority and dominion were given to you in the book of Genesis. 
you are required to operate in authority and dominion. If you're not a person that is a tither, you're going to have that in question all the time. Because you, you're constantly be bombarded with tests, trials, tribulations. And the Bible does say that you will have these things. But here's the thing. You don't have to worry about it. Because you see it in heavenly places. And what keeps you there is your sowing. Because you cannot reap down there. You guys saw my hand. Down there. Let me show you again. Down Because this is how you feel when you're not a giver. Down Because where are you seated? Up here. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys. You know, I was a tither. Everything was being blessed. My whole life was being blessed. I went to another church and they said, You don't have to tithe. Just give as you feel in your heart. And I started giving what I felt. Like, oh, I feel $5. Oh, here I am, $5. And then all of a sudden, everything went blah. I started crashing in. Then I started tithing again. What? There's a big difference. So don't think that I want your money. I want your success. I just want you to be successful. If you see something that maybe the church could use, buy it. But don't buy dusters. Like that one lady from Kilka, right on this front street, she lived 100 dusters she bought for the church. Good night. What are we going to do with 100 dusters? We don't have 100 people for dust. We're going to dust each other? Huh? Oh, I know 50 people with two dusters. Oh, I get it. Oh, my God. We still get dusters. Oh, my God. That was in 1998, guys. The dusters that never go away. Dust. Well, what kind of dust do you need? We get vacuums in this day and age. Buy me one vacuum. You know, I gave the church my vacuum. You know what I'm living in now? I need the dusters. Oh, boy. Anyway, you guys good? All right, so on the back, you got a whole bunch of scriptures. We're going through every one of these tonight. <laughs> I like the honesty in here. Maybe not. <laughs> these are just for you. Should I go through some of them? Sure. Which one? All of them. Okay. I heard you, Uncle. We're going through all of them. Very simply, a winner's mindset is just something you've got to cultivate. So if the enemy of your soul is those things, then you need the Word to give you a winner's mindset. Some of you have asked for scriptures. Here they are. Here's some of them that I've been perusing lately. Philippians 4.13. What does it say? I can. Let's just go with I can. What can you do? Well, then get your highlighter and highlight all things. Then you eliminate impossibility in your life. Amen? Right? You eliminate excuses. You even eliminate reasons. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. He's all King James usually, yeah? unless they say what, where they're from. Second Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear. So fear is out. What has he given you? Three spirits instead, instead of fear. Power, love, sound mind. Three things that Christians struggle with every single day. Especially if you've got religion. Power, you always struggle. Because power is always in jeopardy if you're religious because you're always not sure if you're pleasing God enough to operate in power. Love. Nah, they don't deserve my love. Then you don't think you deserve God's love. Then you all boss up. And the third one is a sound mind. Oh God, don't even get me started. Christians that are religious are not sound in their mind. You know why? Because they're pumping out religion to hide behind the veil of secrecy. Things they're hiding. All right. You can read all of these, right? Go to the right side. First one, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. So how often do you triumph in Christ? Always. Right? Romans 8.1. There's therefore now... No condemnation to, the, to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. That's not a consequential thing because we all live in flesh. Hallelujah. But we are in the spirit as well. 
So don't get beat up when you do something stupid because we all, everybody does something dumb. Right? How many of you just drove on the way over here and told somebody, stupid idiot, drive faster? No, you just judge that person for being a stupid idiot. What are you? A smart idiot. Well, I don't know. Are you a better driver than them? Hallelujah. You get irritated with the person in front of you. How many of you are, am I, yeah? But you know what? You admire the patience in the ones behind you. <laughs> right? Unless they're flashing their lights, blowing their horn, and showing your finger. Yeah, whoa. Somebody flipped me off on the way here. Former member. They're going to look pretty funny when I cut their finger off, but that's okay. Yeah. You know you. Eh? <laughs> I get people like that, you know. Eh? If you don't like my ministry, just leave. You don't need to show me finger after. I know the way to Jesus. Why are you trying to show me heaven? I know I live in heaven. Come on, man. I live in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Some of you over there are like, Pastor, what their name? I'm going to visit them. Their name, let me give you their address. Let me text it to you. And every time we pass them, we all show them the way to Jesus. How's that, huh? Yeah. Remember, we're not losers, we're winners. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And we always show them the Son. Winner, 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 winner. How many are you going to show people the Son of God, huh? Yeah, so when they show you the Son of God, don't get mad, just say, thank you. I got him already. <laughs> Yours going to look mighty funny when it's missing and in my pocket. I'm going to put him on my keychain. People are fine. Well, you can cut one rabbit's foot. You cannot cut one middle finger off one donkey. <laughs> oh, boy. I remember an old lady showed me the finger. I was like, thank you. Can't beat you up, you old hag. Get out of here. <laughs> it wasn't anything. She was going 22. I just overtook her in a dotted line. Just went around and showed me, showed me the finger. Thank you, Grandma. You're showing me nothing. My finger not even straight. It's all arthritis. <laughs> Better not come to church for healing. <laughs> if she showed up, I would gladly heal her. I would just tell her, you got to put that finger in your ear. The Lord is speaking to me right now. Make it do any kind of crazy stuff. Uh, to be healed, you got to do one finger push-ups like Bruce Lee on your middle finger. Go ahead. <laughs> I can get mental too. Yeah, you know. Eh? If I'm the spiritual father of you kids, I got to be more radical than you. I got to back you up. Man. <laughs> Hallelujah. And what else do you want? Look at the last one, Romans 8, 28. You guys... Don't get this misconstrued because some people make a mistake. What does it say? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things in this scenario, you better go study the all things. It doesn't mean everything. Oh, I, I was walking down the road. I broke my leg. Oh, all things work together for good. No. That just means in spiritual speak. All things spiritual work together for good. All right? How many know that the flesh, if a nuclear bomb hit Hilo from China, all things work together for good, Pastor. No. Spiritually speaking, all things work together. Amen? Don't get that, you know, people, they always take things out of context, you know. So, 
I had one lady one time, she came to me for counseling. She's like, <laughs> I said, ma'am, stop crying. Calm down. Let's just talk to that. Why? <laughs> Jesus wept. <laughs> Don't take that out of context. Jesus wasn't weeping because he was emotional. He was weeping for the children of Israel that didn't get it. You know when Jesus gets mad and he cries, it's not because he's moved with emotion. He's just moved because they are defeating themselves when they already have the victory. You don't want Jesus weeping for you because you're dumb. Some of you, Jesus never stopped crying because you're dumb. If that's the truth. He's still crying. Oh, oh my God, he's so stupid. So. You know why Jesus wept? Because God gave him everything. And they're still screwing it up. You know you, where are you seated? In. So you have everything and you're still screwing it up. Jesus is weeping. For you only. He's not sleeping. He's weeping. And he's not sweeping. Hey, if that was the truth, then Jesus never stopped crying since he left. Because people are stupid. I mean, you know some stupid people. Seriously. Don't look in the mirror and call yourself stupid. Or somebody like, you know you, you're so stupid. Look who you ain't married. <laughs> then don't get married. Here, here's my common sense. Some people say, well, you know if they're living in sin. No more sin. You can marry people on people. You can marry them in the spirit. Amen. Because I can tell you this, if you marry them on paper, the paper could say half, half. <laughs> you know, on every marriage license, on the back, it should say, sign this half, and you sign this half, because when Paul, we rip them in half, you get half, half. <laughs> That's what it is, man. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. You know, no cry when you get half. Because you came in with nothing. Half is better than nothing. Right. Oh, hallelujah. That's what they should do, though, is tell you. Do you take this man to take half of your stuff? And do you take this woman? She's going to get half of your stuff, too. Do you agree? Together you are one. Apart, you are half. So you better write your name on all your stuff. Or get one label maker. Like my mother, with clear nail polish all over so he no can come off. My mom, she was smart. She grew up in Lanakila. She always write our name on our stuff and put clear nail polish on top. So when kids try to scratch them out, ah, not working. My mother was on crazy Filipino, I tell you that. She goes on the park, give me that. That's not yours. That's my child. Look at her name with the nail polish. If they only knew nail polish remover. That's what my mom would have to do. Write our name with magic marker and put clear nail polish. So kids no steal your stuff. And then even though they still try to scratch them off and put their name on top. I lost my baseball glove when I was 8 years old. I found it when I was 15. Still had my name on the glove. Had 8 other names on the glove. But mine was still there. It's cross off with just regular ballpoint pen they tried to get rid of it but it wouldn't go anywhere because my mother was smart you see there's a solution to everything if not then duct tape but duct tape not gonna work so yeah, some of you are gonna do that labels can be peeled off but nail polish not got no place without the remover you ladies all know I see your cracked toenails walking around here that I invest. <laughs> Either that or you chew in your toes. Oh, I, some of you ladies wish you could. 
those days are gone. <laughs> I'm done. You guys done? You guys all gonna use?